Whether you're hiking, biking, or slapping the bass. Slapping the bass, man. Slapping that bass, man. I slap it the bass. Please don't do that. Whistler Blackholm is the best bike park in the world. I should know. I've actually been there for a couple days, a couple times. And let me tell you, this place is more magical in person than I can even say in words right now. Cool. Mountain bikers have been coming to Whistler since the mid 1980s to ride and it all started in a primitive way without bike specific trails as we know them and initially without even chairlifts. But soon after, lift access riding became huge business in Whistler, and is still to this day. Since the Whistler Mountain Bike Park officially opened in the summer of 1999, it's steadily grown in popularity, rising from a niche activity to a massive summer attraction. While Whistler Blackholm was not the first to offer lift access mountain biking, the Whistler Mountain Bike Park quickly gained status as one of the world's best. Way back in 1985, in Whistler's pre-park era, Eric White's tour company Back Roads Whistler was the first to offer guided mountain bike rides. His company led guests on cross-country style rides around the trails through Whistler's forests. That same year, White approached Whistler Mountain about guiding riders down the trails, and by 1989, Back Roads Whistler was using the Whistler Village gondola to get riders up the mountain. His employees then started building the first sanctioned mountain bike trails in Whistler, many of which still remain to this day. The first quote-unquote trails built by Backwoods Whistler were a combination of access roads and connecting forest trails. By 1990, Whistler Mountain gave the approval for back roads to build more single track from Olympic Station to the village. Within a few years, trails like Fantastic, Crabapple Turns, After Atlantis, Golden Triangle, and Ho Chi Minh became some of the mountain's longest standing trails. While most of the construction was sanctioned, some of these trails started unauthorized and were later absorbed into the bike park. And so it goes. By 1999, Whistler and Blackcomb Mountains had merged, and the Fitzsimmons chairlift had been installed on Whistler. At this point, Whistler Blackcomb's Rob McSkimming, Rob the Cheeseburger McSkimming, convinced the resort management that lift access mountain biking could turn into a profitable enterprise and would be a great way to use a new chairlift throughout the entire summer. It didn't take long before Whistler Blackcomb's trail builders hit on what would become a major revolution in trail construction, the use of heavy machinery. In 1999, Beeline was the first MTB trail built with an excavator. Beeline was the first trail that was accessible and fun for all as well. While it had some jumps, novices could roll over them while advanced shredders could get some air. Cool. Soon after, the world famous A-Line trail was added and today many of the park's most popular runs are machine built and A-Line being one of the most popular trails in the world. Thanks to Whistler's Everyone Can Ride approach and the regular addition of cutting edge new trails, the Whistler Mountain Bike Park is one of the most popular, most ridden, and my favorite bike park of all time. Let me show you why. Here's a ride down one of its most famous runs, top of the world into Creekside, one of the best descents I've ever done in my life on a bike to this day. Whistler's Top of the World Trail is an amazing experience dropping into the peak of Whistler Mountain. With some of the world's best riding set against the granite spires of the coast range, starting out with a fantastic alpine descent. You even have to buy a separate lift ticket to get to the peak. A gondola ride, a mini descent to the peak chair with appreciation stations along the way. Look at that view. Look at that lake. Let's do this, fellas. And then one of the most beautiful chairlifts that you'll ever see. Make sure to check out the suspension bridge while you're up there before you drop in on this crazy descent. It's crazy how high we are. Woo! That's it. Top of the world will take you through Whistler's Alpine region. The trail winds its way down the backside of Whistler Mountain. That is chunky dipping into areas not even open for skiing in the winter. Wow, seeing this stuff in person is definitely humbling. Woo, look at that view. After miles of downhill descending, it eventually takes you into the Garbanzo bike trails, where you have the option to descend even further down Whistler's newest bike park section, Creekside. And that's where we'll pick up the next half of the descent, down the fastest and flowiest trails you'll ever ride in your life. I'm gonna let the trail speak for itself right now and meet you at the halfway point. Oh, look at that. This is 
this one. Pedaling in some sections, you got steeps, you got flow, then right into rocky bits. Whoa! I am not trained for muddy conditions. So cow loosey goosey guy. Creek Side. The newest addition of Whistler Mountain Bike Park, this section features the flowiest trails in the entire park. Yeah. Creek Side is all flow, dude. Yeah. Take it in. Just at a bike park that goes over a pristine river, no big deal. A bit underrated, I'd say. But after this top of the world descent, which was almost an hour, we had another about 30, 35 minutes of flow trails ahead of us that I had no idea was in store for us. Oh. Oh. Sit back and relax, ride the berms with us, and join me on one of the most memorable experiences on my bike to this date. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Trail's sick. It's got the rocky bits mixed in with the flow. I love that. Yeah. Oh, this is the best ride you ever Right? There you have it folks, top to bottom from top to the world. Already, I know that's one of the best rides I've ever done. Top of the world bucket list. Check. Check.